Hey kindergartners, Mrs. C. Lander. Nice to see you again. Um, I was so lucky that I got to visit two kindergarten classes the last couple weeks, so that's been fun. Um, today we're going to read this book called The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. It is by Eugene Trevisas and illustrated by Helen Oxenbury. Since we know that this story is going to be like The Three Little Pigs, I bet you can make some predictions for your parents about what you think might happen if there are three wolves and one big bad pig. Prediction means you guess what you think is going to happen in the story. So tell your parents one thing that you think might happen in the story. All right, let's sing the song and then I'll read the story. It's story time, it's story time, it's story time on. It's story time, it's story time, it's story time on. You're on the steps, I'm in my chair, I have a book with you to share. It's story time, it's story time, it's story time on. All right, let's start the story. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails, who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it's time for you to go down to the world. Go and build a house for yourselves. But beware of the big bad pig. Don't worry, mother. We'll watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. Soon they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please will you give us some of your bricks? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house out of brick. The very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, Little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. Not by the hair on our chitty chin chins. We'll not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But the house didn't fall down. Pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer, and he knocked the house down. The three little wolves just only managed to escape before the bricks crumbled, and they were very frightened indeed. We shall build even stronger houses, they said, just as they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please will you give us some of your concrete, asked the three little wolves. Well, well for, for certainly said the beaver, and he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house out of concrete. No sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were playing battle door and shuttlecock in the garden when they saw the big bad pig coming. They ran inside their house and shut the door. The pig rang the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, let me in! No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we'll not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapots. And I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and he fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. We shall build an even stronger house, they said because they were very determined. Just then, they saw a truck coming along the road carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Please will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars, an armor plate, and some heavy metal padlocks, they said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros. He gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass, some reinforced steel chains, because he was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. 
Do you think the wolves are absolutely safe? What do you think is going to happen? Good readers ask questions as they read the story, as you should. The next day, the big pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little wolves, with your trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the little wolves. Not by the hair on our chinny chin chins. We'll not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, lit the fuse, and the house blew up. The three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different, but what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please will you give us some flowers? asked the little wolves. With pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house out of flowers. One wall was of marigolds, one of daffodils, one of pink roses, and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made out of sunflowers, and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in the bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house, and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. The next day, the big pig came prowling down the road again and saw the house of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the blue bell at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said three little wolves. By the hair of our chinny chin chins, we'll not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. And I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the big pig. But as he took a deep breath, Ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of the flowers. It was fantastic, and because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. Sniff deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender, and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then, he decided to become a big, good pig. He started to sing and to dance the tarantella. At first, the three little wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick. But soon they realized that the pig had truly changed. So they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First, they played pig pog and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. They offered him tea and strawberries and wolfberries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived happily together ever after. As I was reading the story, um, it made this story made me think of another story. It made me think of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Why do you think it made me think of that story? Well, I'll tell you. The main character in that story, the Grinch, was mean and hateful and hated Christmas and wanted to get rid of it and was trying to do everything to get rid of Christmas. Kind of like the main character in this story, the big bad pig. He wanted to get rid of the wolf's house, and, and did everything he could to get rid of their houses. But in the end, he became friends with the wolves. So that kind of connection, when you do that in a story, is called a text-text connection because you're comparing two different stories. 